Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, sorry my voice is a bit gone, I've got a bit of a cold. I'm not feeling too bad, just throaty. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, early 19th century perfume bottles. I'm talking about cut glass ones, so I'm talking about those little weedy ones, those teardrop ones or any of those kind of things. I'm talking about little bottles. And um, yeah, and they're, they're a thing that there's hardly any references for them. So I'm going to use, and I'm going to use oh, this book. Yeah, so, uh, and also this will be a demonstration why crappy little 60 year old reference books like this, which can be really cheap, are also really useful. So I'm going to use that book, even though it doesn't even mention perfume bottles, but I will be able to use it. So, um, yeah, so with that said, I think um, I'll get on and quickly start showing you some of the glass I have and um, how I'm going to reference it, etc. So here we go. So these first two I'm showing you, I believe these are Irish um, perfume bottles or scent bottles, um, circa 1820s and 30s. Um, there's a number of features about them. One of the features is that actually there is very close things to this in my Irish glass book that I'm going to show you. Um, other features are this one has got what's known as blaze cutting, which is this cutting at an angle like this. Um, you'll see it on decanters where instead of the little cuts going upwards, they go at a 45 degree angle. That's something, and I'm not saying it's a particularly Irish thing, but you see it on Irish glass. Okay, and then the other thing that makes me think it's Irish as well is this base. Uh, it's another thing that I can't guarantee is um, all Irish glass. Ha well, all Irish glass doesn't have this, and maybe the English did it as well, but it's a feature that you see on Irish glass where you have very intense cutting here like this on the base, and then the pond is polished out in the middle. Yeah. <coughs> so... And then this one um, has got reeded or pillar cutting, where it's got grooves cut in the end of it, the, in the edges of every other pillar here. A bit of hobnail, a bit of step cutting. Um, ooh, and um, yeah, it's also got fairly intensely cut base with um, polished center. I just want to show you something. Let me pull in something else. Um, so, this is a glass I bought in Ireland, um, and if you turn it upside down, um, you have that glaze cutting there, yeah. and you have the intensely cut base with the centre polished out as well, so yeah. I know this is this is Irish. I bought it in Ireland. Physically, I was there. I bought this um, from a dealer who told me they bought it from the estate of a judge in Southern Ireland. So, um, so there you go. I'm quite finished actually. Um, this has got something that's usually a sign of quality. The hobnails are strawberry hobnails. Um, where the ends have been cut off and then they've cut little grooves. Can you see that? That is a very labour intensive process. The book I have here is Irish Glass by Dudley Westrop. This is an older book, I think it's um, pre war originally. This is a revised version. And uh, yeah, so these are the two bottles we're talking about so one of my bottles is a bit more like this in general if you notice mine had a little had had those strawberry um, hobnails and then it had like a little gap around the bottom like this one here does um, the other one was shaped like this but with cutting like this but with these with grooves on but altern alternating but unusual pillar cuttings unusual ready and then cutting on the ends of the pillars 
is really unusual. In fact, yeah, I've seen it here and I've seen it on that other bottle that I've got. So, and also um, the stopper on the one with the pillar grooves is, is very like this. Um, so yeah, the stopper on the one that's a bit more like this one is a bit more rounded. But I'm very comfortable that it's out of the same stable. Uh, both of those bottles are out of the same stable as these ones. And um, because there's so many unusual little things about them that are, yeah, just so uncommon. And, and also, I haven't seen any other than the ones I've got and these ones in here. So, so yeah. And what does um, Dudley say about these? Um, free sand bottles. This one doesn't count. This is earlier. Um, Waterford. And the other two... Probably 1820 to 30, and I agree with that. And they're in the National Museum in Dublin, which kind of like, that's a real clincher. Um, there is something else I wanted to show you in this book. Let's so fucking get to the right page. Get to the right page. There we go. Yeah, one of the things that the books are not very good at showing is the base of things. But in this case, they have. And look at this. Now, this is moulded. And he's showing you this moulded one because it's got some letters in it somewhere. Uh, yeah. Saying it's like a seal in, in the middle here, I think. But anyway, when they mould things to look like cutting, they mould them to look like something, and that looks um, like those. And in fact, actually, if you look at it here, here's another one. And I think this one is cut, and you can see. I'm not sure the. Does it come to middle? I don't know. But anyway, this one is. Um, a bit like that has that same intense cutting but as I said books are rubbish um, not, and that's why I'm doing these videos because it gives you a chance to see things in 3D and see things close but anyway we'll move on so I've got a couple more I think these are English ones um, probably a similar period um, with step cut necks both of them hobnails this one has got um, strawberry hobnails this one has got cross-cut hobnails and then this one is a bit unusual in that the stopper is uh, it's got a stamp cutting on it and then with the little starburst cut on the top and then this one there's like a little pin cushion of hobnails in the middle of it and um, yeah, underneath this one has star cut base, um, and on this one you can actually see the wear on the base. Because um, although it's a lot brighter, there's enough about it that I think yeah, this is the right thing. Um, there's the wear; it's got it's a bit nicked in places. The slightly uh, like wobbliness of the um, of the rings. You can see, actually, look at here. There's yeah, the, there's lots of little nicks in the step cutting, which you expect to see. Um, this one uh, also ha has very. In it's a bit like the Irish ones, but the difference here is the centre's not polished out. And on the Irish ones, quite often when you see this intense cutting, the centre's polished out. Why? I don't know. But that's what you see. And you can see, the, again, the strawberry cut hobnails with the top cut off and then little crisscrosses cut on it. And if I show you this one very carefully. So if they have cut the top off, they cut a little tiny cross into the top of every hobnail so it looks like they're all kind of a little bit broken I mean that one is um, but they, every single one has a little tiny I don't know if I can get it to focus um, cross cut into the top of it um, Apart from the really small ones around the top, top 
couple of rows don't have them, but every other row does, even this one here, which is not that big. You can feel it go that way and that way. So yeah. So I'm going to show you my um, crappy 60 year old reference and um, I'll show you why it's a good reference. So this book is called How to Identify English Drinking Glasses and Decanters 1680 to 1830 and, um, and what's nice yeah it's got really it's really bad for illustrations but what he does is he explaining the basics to you so cross cross cut diamonds so that's what those are called yeah and done a slightly different way there I don't know why he's showing it twice I'll have to read it I was just telling some of them across the yeah he's just telling you there's different ways of doing it and then we go with the strawberry diamonds so now you know the names for those features I think on the next page he's called it prismatic cutting um, it's also known as step cutting so um, yeah so if this is covering decanters up to 1830 it kind of dates it doesn't it um, so we are talking still talking 1820s 1830s So this is um, a rather simpler looking um, decanter. I think that word should be deceptively simpler. In that, um, yeah, this is um, pillar or reed cutting. And to do this, um, they would cut grooves into the glass and then smooth, polish them. To round them off. Um, so yeah, deceptively simple, but a lot of work. Um, apparently, this this style um, was only done in the 1830s because um, it was expensive and difficult. Um, it has a little bit of a little bit of a reed cutting in the top, just to uh, mirror the body. Um, a little bit of step cutting there, just like some of the others do, but it shows this kind of style of things, how it's all going. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is quite nice. It's very kind of, although it's simple, it's very tactile. And when you see the the base, it's like a fruit or something. It's really nice. Um, so I'll go back to my my crappy old reference for this one. So I'm back with um, how to identify English drinking glasses and decanters 18, that's 1680 to 1830 by Douglas Ash. And yeah, he explains this. He, he, he's got reading here, but he explains it very nice. Blah, 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 beginning of the 18th century. Pillared. Pillared fluting or reading. I like pillared, but yeah. Um, rather than reading, but because uh, to me it looks like pillars. And then he tells, explains reading because it's a circuit pilasters, more similar to semi semi-circuit section. They were formed by cutting deep vertical grooves and then rounding the edges at the junction of the grooves with the original surface. So, and then he goes on to tell you that yeah, this is difficult and expensive, and they give it up. So, but yeah, those are the little things that you can get out of these kind of old books. So, um, so yeah, so there you go. That's. It is. And it doesn't look like moulding. It has a more shimmery effect. So these two are a completely different prospect. Um, they're more... Um, what is it? Eau de toilet. So more like scented water as opposed to um, concentrated perfume because in actual fact they're not small. They're quite... They're biggish. They're like very small carafes but with a stopper fits quite nicely this one is actually pressed glass or mold blown into a mold and look at the base like this um, but with the pontal cut out so yeah it was blown into mold taken out and then um, done like this but it's got kind of this kind of peacock feather cutting here 
This is very Regency style, um, step cutting, imitating that too. Stopper is also stopper is a mixture of cutting and moulding. Um, let me get it out again. You can see it's. Oh, hang on, it's not going really to come out. There we go. You can see it's it's well cut in. This is cutting. Some this is moulding. It's got the top polished out, so it's yeah, it's kind of a real hodgepodge of um, yeah. This is cut. These are cut. Um, so yeah, it's a real hodgepodge of quality and cheapness, um, and copying um, Regency patterns really. So, but I think it's pr it's blown to mould, it's a bit heavier. I think this is post-1845, but still relatively early, so maybe as late as 1850, maybe a little bit long, but, but yeah, that kind of period. This is also, I think this is from the 1840s, it's again, similar period. It still has a little bit of rather expensive uh, pillar cutting in it, yeah, so these little shapes here are all, if you see them in real life, you can see that they're not moulded. This is cut. Um, you also have a strange cut base. Look at that. So yeah, this is heavy, um, so it was a quality thing. Um, heavy stopper. Um, yeah, and even that's got some heavy duty cutting in it, so see with them. It's like this to match the the base, so yeah, it's it's quite. These are interesting stylistically. I've not seen a lot of stuff that looks like these, um, but you kind of, you know, they're a bit too heavy to be um, made under the excise tax, especially this thing as this is mold blown. So that combination of looking older, but then being heavy. Um, after the exercise tax came off, I think that's what that is. It might be that it's actually French, and it might be even Baccarat did little decanters like this in the 1830s, so it might be that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it is a strange mix of old and newer, te older styles, but mixed with the newer sort of like more uh, technologies. But yeah, so that. That's these two I've got. I don't have a reference for these. I won't, I won't bother with that. So, I'm showing you this one because I don't know. Shape-wise, it's similar to the early ones. Um, that sort of like flying saucer look. With the stopper coming out of the middle. Um, I think these kind of acorny decanters came in in the Regency period. So, yeah, what's interesting is that that's not natural glass. Can you see how that shimmers? Yeah, so this is cut to this shape. Um, some really fine hobnails. It's got little grooves around the top of the neck, like the Irish ones. Yeah, there's all sorts of oddities about this one. More fine hobnails here. Then it's got little arches, which are a little bit of got. So yeah, it's a bit gothic looking. So which tends to say more, and yeah, step cutting across the top here, 1830s, 1840s, um, but yeah, it's a very expensive thing, I think, um, and look at the wear on the base, can you see that? Um, there is one problem with this, I can't get this stopper out, um, my son bought it for me as a present, um, it's really lovely, um, I don't want to force it. I've tried all the the usual tricks. Um, none of them work. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to break it because it was a present. So I hope you enjoyed that little tiny dive into um, cut glass of the sort of like Regency George IV, um, early Victorian era. Um, yeah. References for those kind of um, perfume bottles are 
I don't know where they are. I haven't got any. Um, apart from those Irish ones, and and in actual fact, those bottles that you saw appear pretty much in every in every book that that they want to have them. So, I don't think there's millions of of them floating around. Um, in a way, that can be a bit of a boon, and it's the same with cruets, and I'll do more on cruets as well. In that, um, yeah, I mean, like this one. This circa 1820 Irish that was three pounds plus postage. I think um, this one was a fiver plus postage. Um, I think the others were about similar prices. Um, the bigger ones were similar prices. Um, but the ones with the tall necks, I think I paid the, the bigger one, I paid a little bit more for that one. But yeah, they're not they're not in the reference books. Nobody's out there collecting them. Um I only know that they're perfume bottles because um the Irish glass book tells you this kind of bottle. Because for a while I was thinking, are these ink bottle ink wells? But um no, the Irish glass book tells you they're scent bottles. So yeah. Um, so yeah, they are a thing that you can find, and I said cruets as well. You can find really nice um, Regency cruets for very little money um, because the references are so slim, and you have to go by knowing the cutting styles, you know, and also then going, is it a reproduction? Is it not? Looking at the feel of it, you know. Um, so, with that said. Um, the references I used will be in the description below and um, yeah so uh, please remember to like and subscribe and thank you for watching good night